Hello again. This is uh, our devotional for Tuesday, the, the week that we have about shoes from our Lent in Plain Sight book. Uh, this one is called New Shoes, and it's based on Luke chapter 15, verses 11 through 24. Then Jesus said there was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare? But here I am dying of hunger. I will get up, go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. And get the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now, in the devotional book, the, the author shares the story about a group of teenagers, probably middle school, older middle school age, maybe high school, who were doing some local mission projects. And they were in different community organizations, and one of them was working at a clothing closet. And it talks about how this teenager realized how something as simple as new socks, new underwear and new shoes were so very important to people who were homeless. And for those who are, you know, middle class, we never think about that, about how, how important and what a luxury those are. Living on the streets really eats away at a person's dignity. Um, walking everywhere will wear out your shoes very quickly. And it does damage to the feet. Um, it's not uncommon for folks who've been homeless for a while to have a lot of trouble with their feet in all kinds of ways. Um, think about the hygiene challenges that people face when they don't have constant access to facilities. You know, the ability to shower and keep clean, the ability to have, you know, a, a toilet to use and all the supplies to go with it. That's, you know, for some people, that's a luxury. Used clothing's okay. You know, it's fine for things like sweaters and jeans and, and outer garments, but for undergarments, that's not ideal. I mean, how many of us want to use somebody else's socks or underwear? I mean, I know I wouldn't. And I bet most people wouldn't either. Those are the kinds of things that they tell people not to hand down. It's too intimate an item. It's come into too much contact <laughs> with too much of you. So just having new warm socks, just having new underwear, new shoes, that's something that can not only restore somebody's dignity, but also enhance their health. I mean, if you can't walk, because your feet hurt so much from poor fitting shoes or shoes that have been worn through, that's really, can be very harmful. Getting those new items sometimes helps signify to someone that they're valued, that, that they're noticed, that they can feel worthy. The, the prodigal son story tells of a young man returning home and he's expecting to be shamed for what he's done. And in his case, 
he's done some pretty horrible things. I mean, by requesting his share of the inheritance while his father was still alive, he's basically given his father the greatest insult he could, basically saying to him, I wish you were dead. So he's done nothing to earn favor <laughs> with anybody. Um, and so he's he's got a lot of baggage he's bringing back with him. But when he comes, he's he's expecting to be relegated to a servant, to, you know, to the status of a servant, to not be considered this man's son anymore. But instead, he receives this incredible welcome, um, new clothing, new shoes, huge party for everyone, because he was thought to be dead, and he's alive. And so it's this huge cause for celebration. And it's a reminder that grace never does just enough. Grace always overflows. There's always an abundance of it. I mean, by its very definition, grace is an overabundance. Um, it manifests in unexpected ways. And, you know, people getting excited when their their value and their worth is, is, is honored, when their individuality is honored, um, when people are welcomed and, and celebrated, when they are able to receive new things, you know, things like new shoes. For someone who's never had them, it's an amazing gift. It's a shame that we're so jaded in some ways that we don't see the the inherent grace in those kinds of moments. Um, for so many of us, a new pair of shoes is, oh, well, you know, my black shoes don't look too great anymore. I really need a new pair. So we just go and we get them. Maybe not right now, but <laughs> but we can just go and do that. We never think about the implication of what if we couldn't afford to replace anything. That sense of being valued and of being worthy. None of us will ever truly be worthy of all the grace we've been given. By definition, we never can be. So it's important to, to bear that in mind and to, to keep that in focus that God has given us gifts that we'll never, never truly deserve. Just as happened to, this, to the prodigal son in the parable, so happens to us. Now, most of us don't get to the level of losing everything and giving everything away and, you know, squandering it all. But that doesn't mean that we don't get more than we deserve because we do. Now, as it happens, when I was doing my ministry internship and did a lot of work with the homeless population, and that's one of those things that, you know, is, is important is to be able to help people maintain some dignity, to help people maintain their sense of self-worth. That's important because we're all God's beloved children. And it doesn't matter what's happened to us or where we've ended up. We're still God's beloved children. And we have to remember that fact and honor that fact in one another. So let's look at our questions. When have you experienced a sense of being valued and beloved? And how was that expressed? And I bet a lot of us have memories of that, um, either from family or teachers or someone. Uh, I think that's it's such an important part of showing people we care about them. Have you ever been surprised by a gracious response when you expect judgment? Have you ever offered grace to someone expecting your judgment? That one's a little tougher because we all have things that we've done that we're not proud of. But when you received a gracious response, when you expected someone to condemn you, or when you in turn did the same, when you offered grace to someone, even though they probably didn't deserve it, that's an important thing. And it, it shows 
growth and change in us when we're able to do that. So just some things to think about. And I hope you've enjoyed this one. And we'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.